Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today on this Friday brought to you by our friends at Campbell River Quitsum Communications Group. More on them uh, later. As we bring in NHL analyst, co-host of the Bob McCowan podcast, John Shannon, uh, who's going to set us straight when it comes to CCM and Coho. He knows. And NHL teams back in the day. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good, good. So uh, I, I went Friday, on. Friday, though. It's a Friday, it's Friday thing again. You know I mean? I know. Well, what, I, we didn't I, bump I, you for I Thomas said, I, this time. I, I said I would move, but not for Drance. That's all. That's the thing. So <laughs> makes two of us for the record. Happy. So if I got it right, that uh, CCM and Coho both supplied jerseys for some of the teams back in the day. My understanding is yes, that that that's what. In fact, I think Jofa was involved too. Yeah, well, I, well. I think there was a classic non-exclusive world. You know, <laughs> National Hockey League. You know, the National Hockey League as an entity didn't have very much of a marketing department. It was in charge of officiating and in charge of scheduling. And the teams were allowed to do a lot more in the in the 70s um, than than they are now. And, and really, it, it all changed and got centralized uh, when Gary Bettman showed up as commissioner and said, well, what are we doing? You know, we have to be better yeah. at, at creating revenue out of certain situations, and that's exactly what he's done. And he, what he did was, he did that by, in 1994 by uh, getting permission from all the clubs that the league controls the team logos. Hmm. And so you can't do anything with the Vancouver Canuck logo, even in 50-mile radius of, of Rogers Arena, without the permission of the National Hockey League in New York. Wow. There's a lot of radio stations and TV stations who are well aware of that, uh, uh, John. Hey, um, yeah. uh, you mentioned Gary Bettman. You had him on, if I'm not mistaken, on the Bob McCowan uh, podcast. What was your uh, takeaway from that? What's on his mind these days? Yeah, it's just uh, it's just about to uh, be delivered uh, to uh, all the platforms and then on Sirius XM tonight at uh, 3 o'clock Pacific. Um he was actually in a pretty good mood. He hasn't been well. He's been sick a little bit. Got a bad cold from all his traveling. But uh, we got into what uh, what was going on in Ottawa, what was going on in Tempe. Um, we talked about a various bunch of issues that people have, you know, tried to talk about through the season. How to manage what went on with uh, the diversity issues and players not wearing sweaters mm. during warm-up or not wanting to wear it. Uh, you know, how does Joel Quinville and Stan Bowman, how do they get back in the National Hockey League if they want to get back in the National Hockey League? So it was a it was a classic, uh, you know, a broad-based conversation. We talked about the Jacob Truba hit. Wow. Uh, w- yeah. whether, he, whether he liked it or not. And, and quite frankly, he admitted he didn't like the hit, hmm. but understands why the hit exists. So it, 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 he was... He was. He's always been very giving uh, to Bob and me, and uh, and today really was was no different. John Leafs, uh, their fans were chanting, "We want Florida." Well, they got Florida. They're down to. <laughs> they're down to nothing. Uh, sum up that uh, first two games for us. Well, the better team won. Yeah, uh, and, you know the the team that had intensity for sixty minutes won. The, the team with the better goaltender won. Um, you know, Matthew Kachuk is worth every penny. Sam Bennett uh, is now, you know, persona non grata in Southern Ontario. <laughs> and uh, there's probably wanted posters out for him now. So it, it's it's funny. There was a lot of discussion before game one that would the Panthers feel a letdown after beating the Bruins in seven in such dramatic style? Well, the letdown was the other team. The The letdown was the Toronto Maple Leafs who got that monkey off their back of winning their first playoff series in 19 years. And they came out of the gate, you know, fast for the first seven minutes of game one and then got into a malaise. Same thing in game two, out of the gate yep. Yep. and then got into a malaise. It's there is uh, I, people can laugh and say, well, that that shouldn't be it. But I think there is something to that, that, you know, a lot of these guys said, as long as we win a series, we're going to yeah. be okay. They don't want to be that. They want to win the Stanley Cup like anybody else. But there, you have to think that there's, there's something in the back of their mind saying, well, at least we won one. Hmm. 
Yeah, big time. John, I don't know how many teams can survive no Svechnikov, Pacioretty, and Tara Vannon. But at some point, Rod Brindamore has got to get his dues, as, and he's from Campbell River, and we love him. But what a coach this guy is. I mean, it doesn't matter who's in or out of the lineup. These guys are like a machine. And give Don Waddell and Eric Tulski, the assistant general manager, yep. a, a ton of credit, too, because – what they have been able to do is uh, is find players that can play their system. And by the way, we should probably give Ron Francis a bit of credit still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you yeah. think about how he drafted uh, some of those players, like Sebastian Ajo, yep. uh, to who has become an absolute superstar. Uh, but you know, lots of good good trades. You know, to go get Burns. And Brett Burns has become a really important part of that team. Uh, Brady Shea. I mean, all, all these guys on the on the back end. Uh, they are a tremendous, tremendous team. And and I, you know, when you look at what they did so easily to New Jersey in Game One, you have to give them the you know yep. a nod to be the favorite to come out of the East at this point. Before I let you go, John, did you ever? Uh, you've been around for a while. Did you ever meet Gordon Lightfoot? No, I didn't. I did. I've, I saw him. In, I've seen him in concert. Obviously, he was he was brilliant. You know, and uh, and proudly Canadian. You yeah. know, the it's funny. I we, we we had we had mutual friends that you know he loved Saturday night hockey and loved yeah. the Maple Leafs and and he was one of those guys. By the way, just to, I, mm-hmm. I know we got to go, but a quick no, thing: no problem. Boston Bruins, Boston Bruins, New York Rangers, out of the playoffs. Do the math from an ownership perspective: six million dollars minimum per gate. Wow. So. When you have the Boston Bruins with 135 points, you think you're going to win the Stanley Cup. You could arguably play, you know, 14, you know, how many, how many home games would that be? You know, the maximum would be uh, 16. So let's give you 12 home dates for four rounds. That's $70 million, guys. Yeah, tons of money. $70 million. Yeah. Rangers, the same thing. So there's a reason that Chris Drury and Gerard Gallant were yelling at each other yeah. about things when – there's a ton of pressure from ownership to do something, and I think I think Gerard's in tough tough times. They have to uh, the Rangers have to tell him uh, by the middle of June whether they're going to extend him for the fourth year. Uh, that'll be an interesting uh, decision to make, and I think there's a clock ticking there. You keep asking us to do math on the air, John. We're going to keep we're going to keep bumping you at week at week after week. Not you good. know we can't do that. You know, not good. <laughs> Just don't. Don't bump me to Saturday, okay? (laughs) Done. All right. (laughs) Thanks, John. Have a great weekend. You too, guys.